This morning uh, I thought we'd look at um, a way of kind of benchmarking where we're at with our walk and um, it involves three simple principles and if we apply these principles to every situation then we can discover a biblical way of responding doesn't matter what the situation is. And it's this. Attitude, behaviour, and reaction. And um, I want us to look at these three things. Um, attitude, behaviour, and reaction. What's my attitude? What's my behaviour? And what's my reaction? The attitude is what we think. Simple enough. Behaviour is what we do and reaction is how we respond to our circumstances. And each of these attributes kind of feeds each other. So if one's kind of um, out of kilter then what happens is you get inconsistency. For instance, we would we have a phrase we would say someone has a terrible attitude. Yeah? And we understand. Now if someone's got a terrible attitude, the likelihood is that they're not going to be, you know, they're not going to have good behaviour. Because a bad attitude feeds your behaviour and therefore your behaviour is not good. And if your behaviour is not good, then the likelihood is how you react to circumstances is not going to be good either. And so the three of them are very linked. And they're three simple things that, if we look at them in our own life, can help us. Um, basically, I think all we need to do is we, we just need to ask ourselves some simple questions. Um, it's about examining our motives, and in examining our motives, it's about learning how, first of all, um, we should respond, we think we should respond, second of all, how we do respond, and then the third one is how we treat it when things don't always go as we plan. Now, the thing about this is that when I've looked, well, I mean, I look at it all the time, but when you look at it in your life, one of the things you'll discover is that probably um, we don't live our lives consistently, biblically. Very often what we'll do is we, we say we believe one thing, i.e. our attitude is one thing. Um, we very often kind of have the illusion of believing that or doing that, that's our behaviour, but actually our responses can very often let down those other two. Yeah, so I can call myself a Christian, I can tell people that I'm a Christian, but my behaviour in how I respond to certain things doesn't always marry up to what I've said previously. And it's very important that that does. And I just want to set the biblical scene for this, um, and it may well be that in future talks we actually go through them individually, but we're just going to kind of breeze through them. And the first, Ephesians 4.23, tells us that we need to be made new in the attitude of our mind. You see, Scripture realises that the attitude of our mind needs to be renewed. Um, and then Philippians 2.5 kind of gives us the goal of that. And the goal, Philippians 2.5 says, is that we should have the same attitude, the same mind as that of Christ Jesus himself. So that's the goal. 1 Peter 4 says to us that we should arm ourselves with that attitude, with the same attitude as Christ Jesus. Now, ask yourself, when does someone need to arm themselves? 
you only ever, ever need to arm yourself if you're going into battle or you're in danger. So you see, this attitude is so crucial because if we don't have a biblical attitude, then what's going to happen is that we are not going to survive the war that we're going to go into. Because we're going to go in, you imagine going into battle with no weapons. We're only just walking in there. Now, very often when we talk about the battle, we talk about, you know, clothing ourselves with the armour of God. I want us to understand that our attitude, our mind, our mindset, our thoughts are so important. Then we move on to behaviour. Galatians 6 says that we should test our own actions. Yeah? Don't worry about testing other people's actions at the moment. Galatians 6 says test your own actions. Why should we test our own actions? Because scripture said, says then we can make sure that we aren't deceiving ourselves. Now, I know we all like to throw out there that the devil is the one that deceives me deceives the brethren. But actually Galatians 6 says test your own actions because through your own actions you can deceive yourself. Too often we give the devil too much credit. Yeah? We can deceive ourselves. Titus 1 actually goes on to say that despite claiming to know God, our behaviour can actually show that we deny him. Now that's strong, very, very strong words. You can claim one thing, yeah? your attitude, my mindset, oh yeah, I know God. But actually our behaviour can actually show that I'm denying Him. And we will go on to look at some of the ways that we deny Him. And I suspect most of us are sitting there going, well I don't deny Him. But you will be surprised at how many times we deny him in what we do. And then the third one is response. Think of response as who am I under pressure? A great example of this biblically is the story of Peter. Here's a guy in Luke 22, you know the story, who proclaims that he will go wherever Jesus goes. He will stand and he will be strong for him. He, wouldn't, he will be the guy that is going to be the go-to guy for Jesus. Right? He's spent these three years with them. He's full of faith. He's got the attitude. Absolute belief. Come follow me and he followed him. He's there. This is the Peter. What a man of God. A couple of verses later, in response to his circumstances, what does Peter do? He denies him. Now you see there is a great example of someone who's got a good attitude, he's got good behaviour, but the response let him down. When he came under pressure, he fell apart. Now, are we the, are we the Peter of Luke 22, or are we the Peter of Acts chapter 2, who this time, the response is that he stands up in front of the crowd, and he says, this is who Jesus is, and he preaches to the crowd. You see, the, the thing about the response in people is that it will swing sometimes. Sometimes we have a good response, sometimes we have a bad response. Now, as I said, I think what we're going to do, just to give this the, the, um, the time it deserves, is that we will go through each one of them. But very simply, I just want us to, to go into our week thinking, what's my attitude? What do I believe? Yeah. Do I believe that God is in control? Because you see, if I believe here that God is in control, and I then act as if God's in control, and I then react as if God's in control, that is going to be 
a great testimony. Rather than saying, yeah, God is in control, absolutely. And then something happens, and I kind of go, God, I don't understand this. Or I get frustrated, or I get angry, or I get whatever. That consistency from head to heart to mouth is so important. I think it, I believe it, I say it. If we get more stable, let me say it like that, probably not a good term, but if we get more stable in our attitude, in our behaviour, and in our response, then we're going to be able to live lives that are according to scripture and that actually have an impact. Not only on those around us, but on ourselves. Because inconsistency is one of the kind of the, um, the chains that bind us. And the more we can get consistency, biblical consistency in our life, then the more we're going to live the victorious life that we're called to.